joining us now to break it all down and all these latest moves and what it means for investors is David Bonson, the CIO of the Bonson Group. So thank you for joining us here today. What is your big picture overview of what we've seen this week even? Uh, the earnings has been, it's been a roller coaster ride and the same thing with the economic data. Well, I continue to believe that people are making a huge mistake to be overanalyzing both the inflation data and the Fed data. The I, I don't know when people are going to learn that the idea that the Fed will be cutting here or cutting there or it'll be three cuts or two cuts, that markets shrug that off in a very quick period of time. Um, it seems to me to be so obvious at this point. You spent all of last year with incredibly tight Fed. It wasn't until the end of the year that the Fed forward guided that they were preparing to go more accommodative. And now this year, you've had expectations reset substantially, and markets have largely digested it. Um, what drives markets is earnings. The valuations on those earnings are way too high. There are things that are way too frothy, but the noise around what the Fed will do or not do, they are not going to raise rates again. And they may cut a little less than people thought. They're obviously going to cut later than people thought, but it is just simply immaterial to what an investor ought to be thinking about. So why is that? I mean, as you know, David, we talk a lot about what the Fed is going to do. Why do you think that whether rates get cut in June or in December or not at all this year isn't going to be material for most investors? Well, it will be material to those who are trying to uh, day trade the day before, day of, or day after. Those people, whether they know what the Fed's going to do or not, are still going to get their faces ripped off because uh, they're not going to know what they're doing because it's a in, it's an inherently unknowable thing, not just what the Fed's going to do, but what exactly markets will do in response. So other than a day of gamble... Um, markets are, are pricing in a discounted stream of cash flows that go out years. And if the Fed cuts in September versus July, that discounting of cash flows isn't at all affected. Um, what well, NVIDIA trading at 68 times earnings or 63 times earnings is not uh, relevant to what the Fed is doing. NVIDIA is just trading at a high PE. And NVIDIA is either going to keep its high PE or it's going to come lower. But that has nothing to do with what the Fed's going to do. And so I think that we have just deified the Fed in the way we think about their role in markets. I think it's very unfortunate. Um, if the Fed was looking at significant further tightening and that therefore a recession was to come, then then obviously that becomes more fundamentally relevant. But the Fed is not going to raise rates again. I want to dig into what you've been saying on earnings. But first, since we're talking about the Federal Reserve, I do want to ask you about a report today in The Wall Street Journal that the economic advisors to former President Trump, who, of course, is running for re-election, have floated various ways that he could potentially remove Jay Powell before his term is done as Fed chair or otherwise sort of become more involved in Fed policy. Uh, what do you, th I mean, as someone who, as you've just said, you don't think it's necessarily relevant for most investors on a day-to-day -day basis, but what effect do you think that would have on the markets? I think that there wasn't a single person quoted in that story. And and um, I've reached out to five people today that actually served in the Trump administration, and not a single one of them have any idea what he's talking about. Um, I think that it would be a disaster if it were to happen. And candidly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something that President Trump wanted to happen, but it's not going to happen. The president cannot control the Fed chair, shouldn't control the Fed chair. The whole idea is frightening. But the story simply lacked any sources whatsoever. And to the degree that there are actual sources who were in the Trump administration, who are in the campaign and who are advising him economically now, they all vehemently deny it. So it's very difficult for me to take it seriously. Right. And the, the story did sort of say it was floated or I guess worked on by a very narrow um, list of folks. But to your point, we'll see what ends up coming out of this. So let's get back to what we do know, David. And that is earnings, as you alluded to. And that's really what you're focusing on. So you brought up the idea of valuations here as we get these various companies reporting. When it comes to big tech in particular, typically when we talk about high valuations, that's what we're talking about, these big growth companies. Do you think, given what we've heard over the past week, that those valuations are justified? 
Oh, God, no. Not, not even close. Um, I, that doesn't mean that they come down imminently, though. That's the problem with valuation. It's the problem with someone who's more value conscious like I am is that it's not a timing mechanism. Um, what it means is high valuation puts you just with a very high trigger sensitivity. Any bad news becomes exaggerated. You know, one week ago today, we were sitting here and in one day, 10% fell off of NVIDIA's market cap that brought it down to an 18% drawdown at that time. And you were talking about $250 billion coming out of a market cap. And then, of course, it's, it's now rallied back and I think it's up a few percentage points back today. But my point being that that high volatility is a byproduct of a high multiple that is totally disconnected from reality. And so expensive stocks get more expensive um, until they don't. But it's impossible to gauge, judge, and certainly time. Uh, but you saw already this year earnings season, Facebook getting just ripped apart yesterday, and yet Google rallying today. The MAG7 is over. It just doesn't exist as a monolith anymore. David, I couldn't uh, be happier to hear that. I was tired of saying it. But uh, we got a, a lot happening in earnings season next week, the weeks after. Anything we haven't discussed that uh, is on your radar? I just think people ought to pay attention to this energy sector here. The entire energy sector, the S&P 500, is worth 70% of Apple. And yet it has 120% of the free cash flow of Apple. And Apple is, as you know, one of the biggest free cash flow generators in history. That's a comment on how expensive Apple is, but it's a comment on how cheap the energy sector is. There's reasons for that to some degree. There's volatility, there's CapEx. Um, you know, there, it's not a free ride to be invested in energy, but it just has continued to perform very well since November of 2020. And I don't think enough investors have energy in their portfolio. Uh, I'd continue to keep an eye on how that's doing throughout this earnings season. And David, I got to ask you a quick follow on that because we got earnings from Exxon and Chevron today and Exxon did disappoint a little bit, right? And there's still some uncertainties out there, not just with the oil price, what's going to happen with the Guyana uh, developments, which are producing a lot, but we don't know who's going to own it a year from now. Right. So how do you feel about some of those uncertainties? Well, keep in mind, Exxon was up 21% year to date coming sure. into today. And so it's given back a couple points here today as Chevron is now turned in is up on the day. Um, but I think that you have companies that are generating unbelievable free cash flow. The big takeaway for Exxon today, going out to 2027, they're looking at $13 per barrel of oil of profits and doing 4.3 million barrels per day by 2027. That's just absolutely incomprehensible profits. And also perhaps surprising given uh, the rhetoric maybe compared with a few years ago. David, uh, thanks so much. It's great to see you. Have a great weekend. Thanks to you too. Appreciate it. Thanks.